Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So it is the 17th of July 2020 and this morning I received some samples from a show uh, that were done with Amazagas last month and I couldn't resist uh, having a look at one and uh, I just picked one and I immediately saw something that made it impossible for me to not want to have a look at it and uh, or under the microscope, and the microscope's here, you can see, and what I saw was these, what I call a yin-yang, I've seen these on Hutchison samples and other samples, so it's a pair of two structures, uh, uh, one, one's the evil twin of the other one, <laughs> uh, next to each other, same scale, and uh, I would imagine that this is a loop that is kind of uh, probably coming out of the dark one going into the light one uh, or of course of course it could be vice versa but there it is there they are what we're going to look at on the microscope so here it is on the microscope and you can see the white one here and if I move it uh, you can see it's evil twin over here so we've got the white one here and the evil twin and when I looked at this I rotate it round maybe you can get what I'm there's a bit of perspective distortion here because I'm having to look up the camera but uh, essentially you might see what I see which is a hexagon here 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 here, here. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, you look at samples and you see this. Now, um, when I was looking at the Amaza plates uh, originally, um, I used the polarization filter and it made things that weren't there appear. So I have uh, a video here and we'll come to that one in a minute. Uh, but essentially, uh, this was on one of the vibrator plates. And all over, you saw these uh, ring marks all over, all over, all over. And um, again, on there, you saw strange radiation tracks, various scales, uh, like this one. So it was actually on this part. This is the part of the vibra vibrator plate that was in the uh, solution that's being um, moved around. So you can see all of these uh, structures here but also there were these uh, structures here that looked very very much like the uh, crystallized hydrogen um, that was in one of the very uh, early papers by Matsumoto which is here which I've, I've shared before but uh, it's these crystallized hydrogen structures here and he calls them uh, uh, if you can see that there uh, scattered itonic hydrogen items frost he also uh, saw these things um, called scatic iton, itonic hydrogen uh, atoms droplets here. And I will share this video in the link to the presentation. Uh, anyway, so that's a, a similar structure to the one that he saw. Now, um, I actually, like I say, the, the first strange radiation track that I saw in Japan, uh, I was just looking at plate got home in uh, the accommodation and uh, Dr. George Eagley was standing behind me and all I did was I put it under and I played with the polarizer and it just popped out. It didn't look like there was anything there and then it just popped out. Well, obviously you can see the white structure here, but if I play with the polarizer, you can see that basically almost everything fades away. So certainly the kind of like the evil twin over here is, is not really visible anymore. Um, but this one is really still very strong. You kind of lose this outside edge with the polarizer here, the actual boundary line there a little bit. Uh, you've got the spot in the center, which we often see with Evos. Uh, there seems to be another one that may be a, a separate event here. But it got me thinking, um, you know, if this is uh, monoatomic hydrogen, which we know uh, Marsagas uh, tested the early prototype for, for about 0.28% monoatomic hydrogen. And if um, 
you know, the itonic frost is actually some form of dense hydrogen. Could we looking at uh, could we be looking at something that responds to certain polarizations of light uh, that is not normal matter? And you know, one thing that I'll draw your attention to is this, which is monoatomic gold. And monoatomic gold does not absorb any light because the electrons just can't um, they can't interact with the light in a normal way. So basically, it completely, completely reflects all light. So it ends up being this kind of like whiter than white, snow white type stuff. Um, the electrons aren't in a position to, uh, you know, absorb energy uh, in the traditional atom way and release it or release different frequencies, um, resulting in color. And I'm wondering if there's something else, something similar that's going on here, and that, you know, I always wondered how Matsumoto was able to determine that something was. Um, uh, itonic hydrogen uh, either in the crystal or the droplet form and it, it occurred to me that maybe he had a, a polarizing filter on his um, uh, on his microscope you know I've tried to give him credit for everything else because he's actually written it down well he never wrote that down but what I can say is here I only saw the first strange radiation tracks uh, in that in that particular instance it was actually coming out of a cavitation spot right out of the center and it might be that as the uh, ultra-dense hydrogen that's been formed in that uh, walks across the surface, that maybe it either changes the material in a certain way or even deposits some of this dense hydrogen or, or as Shoulders would say, uh, changes the permittivity of the material such that it just interacts with light in a weird way. And this would explain why potentially in some cold fusion experiments you simply do not see elements uh, that you would normally see. <laughs> like you don't get all of the uh, lines and you don't get lines that are on where they should be sometimes. It get, it's sometimes difficult to determine the elements. Anyway, this sample if I, it, that I'm looking at here um, uh, is essentially what they did. It's a, it's a stainless steel 302, sorry, 304 sample. And if you can imagine this is the stainless steel sample, they actually put it so that it was touching water. And they were then uh, doing the discharges, uh, sorry, the, the Amasa gas on the top surface. So it was like effectively cooled underwater. But uh, you can imagine that there was potentially uh, some influences going through, certainly thermal influences. And when I share some videos, you'll see uh, often things are born underneath and they fizz around and then pop up from underneath which is very interesting. So I thought I'd have a look at the other side. So we're going to turn the polarizer off there. So you can see the kind of hexagon there and you can see over here, uh, where is it, the evil twin. So there's our uh, yin and yang. And I'm going to pull that out now. In fact, I'll, I'll do it at a little less magnification so maybe you can see the two together. There we go. Right, now um, and you see, like, I bang the, the polarization on there and it, <laughs> everything else kind of disappears and you just see this hexagonal type structure. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over to the other side. And uh, I'm going to bring the, the normal camera back because I, I want to show you that you can't really see anything of particular interest. It just looks like some burnt stuff and, and some sort of slightly affected areas. So. So here is the other side, and presumably this was the side that was touching the water, although it may not have been, it may have been the other way around. It would have been helpful if the samples had been marked. Anyway, I just wanted to show you something that I found rather interesting on here. Now, when you look at it with your own eyes and with this camera, it just looks like some oxidization over there. There's some spot with the yellow ring around it, which might be interesting if we saw a lot of sulfur there. Um, because that would be two oxygens fusing. So this is going to be very interesting when, when we look at it under the SEM. But th these general marks over here, you really don't see anything too interesting. Anyway, I just want to, uh, you know, have a look at, uh, show you what uh, I saw on this one over here, which, as I say, you cannot see anything re really very interesting on that. It's kind of like got a feature at one end and then this kind of like teardrop shape out to the side. So let me just show you what that looks like when we look at it under the microscope.
So here is the feature in question. Uh, like I say, it's got this um, spot up here, which has got some interesting detail up close. This kind of area here, then this area, and then this kind of ejector out of the back. But that's it. Now, I, it would be nice, like I say, to know whether this was on the surface that was in contact with the water or uh, where the Amaza gas uh, was directly exposed. But you really can't see anything too interesting. Now, let me show do exactly what I did to find the first strange radiation track on uh, the Amaza plate when I was there last year. If I just twizzle this, we get this stunning mesh array. It's like, what on earth am I looking at there? It's really beautiful. Um, so, uh, just move that around. Maybe we can throw a few more lights on that. No, oh, let's see if I, you can see here, maybe we'll put a little bit too much light there. So yeah, so if you have a that there it is. Uh, so what are we looking at there? I will take this in, and we will need more light when we're closer. Look at that. It's absolutely stunning. What is that? Please, someone tell me what this is. Could this be a sort of web-like structure? Like Matsumoto was describing? Certainly looks a little bit webby to me. Yeah? Let's have a look if we can go in a bit further than that. Okay, we're going to need a little bit more light here. Look at this. Look at that. What? What is going on there? What is it? What are we looking at? It is a thing of great beauty. Now, I think what I need to do is to take lots and lots of images, make sure they're all in focus, and uh, get a uh, tiled image out to you guys. Look at it. It looks like some sort of crystal here. Now, <laughs> I can hear Leclerc saying, it's crystallized water and jumping up and down, but is it? Or are we looking at hydrogen frost here. I can hear one Randall Mills saying, oh, it, it, it's uh, uh, hydrinos, it's a hydrino compound. I don't know, but what it is, it looks very fractal. It almost looks like it's alive. It's a thing of great beauty. Anyway, so, that is what I couldn't stop myself from sharing with you today. There's the tail end. We have a look up at the head. And so I'm just going to show you the head here and change the polarization so you can see what is going on in the spot here. So actually, you can see there. Look at that. What have we got in the middle there? What have we got in the middle there? Well, isn't that interesting? Are we seeing a piece of like a sphere or something in there in this central area here? Are we? I don't know. Are we? That's the difference. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video. I can't see anything, look.
Can't see anything. Just looks like a bit of metal. And then you do this. Uh, boom. And you have your web. Your crystal web. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.